So hey guys, welcome to our OJA board application info night. This is going to be for 2021 through 22 school year. Um, just as a brief, we have our little application process like checklist. So first off, we have our info night, which is today. We're having it recorded for people who might not be able to make it out or um, just people who are busy right now. And also for you guys to refer to later. Um, our second thing on the list is to fill out our application. So we're going to be dropping that Sunday night for you guys. It's going to be a Google form. So you guys put your name and yada, 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 and you fill out the questions. Make sure you take your time because it's due on Sunday, March 29th, I mean 28th. So you have a lot of time to work on the questions, but then don't procrastinate too, too hard. Um, but I just encourage you guys to think about the questions really well and uh, be descriptive. And fourth, we have our results. So we're going to drop the re results on week two of spring quarter. So yeah, just a heads up for that. So uh, uh, introduction. So our Open Jam board, um, we work as a team. We have weekly and quarterly tasks. So in the beginning of um, like before the quarter starts, we all come together and uh, meet and we distribute tasks. Um, individual tasks and we also go over goals for our quarter. So we have this little thing like if you're proficient in a certain thing, like for example, like we have ukulele and guitar workshops. So if you guys are like know how to play guitar, ukulele, then maybe you would be more inclined to um, take on this tasks, a task. Um, and like when we we're offline, you know, we had like setup and stuff. So um, people who knew how to do that would take on those tasks. But if you want to learn about a certain like um, role, we're happy to teach you. And like if I know like if. I knew how to do something and you were curious about it, I, I'll definitely teach you. I mean, we're pretty like open. And then, so for the individual tasks, we have posting events on Facebook, Discord, and Instagram. These are our three socials. Um, we have YouTube videos too for open, or I mean the gig night performances. So that's also a thing to think about. We have our designing of flyers. So you guys have seen on our Instagram and whatever we post for an event, we have like a little, um, graphic that goes along with it. We have our weekly event newsletter. So this is our email um, list. We have our bi-monthly Spotify playlist. You guys have seen that through our Discord, Facebook, and we have emceeing. So like right now I'm talking, I'm presenting. And like uh, Amanda, she does that for our open mics and um, like a lot of the time. So like we have those kind of tasks, but it kind of like goes around like, so um, it's not strictly one person for everything. Like people kind of just like volunteer here and there. There. We have our recording of open mic performances through Zoom. So, you know, every time we have our open mics, we record them and we post them on our Instagram page. Um, we have answering any questions and requests. So this is something all board members do as individuals um, whenever we get. Oh, yeah. So like right down here, it says answering email, Instagram, Facebook inquiries. Whenever we have people asking questions like that, um, feel free to go ahead and answer them or you can come to our uh, group chat and then we can discuss them and then answer people. And then we have going back up, applying for ASUCI funding. Um, that hasn't really been happening this quarter because you know online stuff. Um, but then uh, usually when we're offline, that happens. Uh, we have keeping track of finances. So we have like a treasurer. I know Zoe has been our treasurer for uh, quite some time. And we have planning and teaching the guitar workshop. So like what I mentioned earlier, if you know how to play guitar, usually you would kind of do that. And then for group tasks, we have like a lot of things that we do as a group, um, like just any big decisions. Um, we have deciding schedules of events for the quarter, like I mentioned, like before the quarter, we all kind of sit down, go through a Google sheet, I mean, a Google, uh, Google sheet, I guess, like of like what we have planned or what we're going to plan. We have choosing gig night ads. So whenever people submit our, um, their gig night act we evaluate them and see like oh we're gonna admit them and we have fundraising so you guys have seen our past sticker fundraiser we all like came together decided like whether or not we wanted to do that fundraiser or um we had previous blm fundraiser that's like the like uh, rock coalition and yeah things like that and amanda yeah so also as you guys know um actually is it recording me Okay, there we go. That works. Uh, so as you guys know, um, the pandemic situation is kind of evolving and unknown. Can you guys hear me? Cool. Uh, yeah, the pandemic situation is kind of evolving and unknown. And we're assuming at some point that we're going to be able to 
transition back to in-person events in the future. And there are just a couple of differences um, about the way our tasks work and kind of our events run. I know a couple of you guys are familiar with us already, but for um, people who have only been with us in the online setting, uh, these are good things to keep in mind. So usually our range of events stays the same. So like we still have open mics, we still have gig night, we still have socials um, and kind of like weekly meetings, but they just happen in person. So usually at open mics, there's a food court on campus called Phoenix Grill that we'll book and set up our equipment in and have our open mic there. Um, gig night, usually we book Crystal Cove, which is like the big auditorium in the like kind of the fancy managerial part of campus or um, if we can't get that then we'll usually do it in a lecture hall. Um, we'll do socials too, um, in-person socials that we've done in the past have been karaoke. Uh, we have done, oh my gosh, I'm gonna blank, I'm gonna blank so hard. What else have we done? Beach, beach. Beach, that's um, right, beach bonfire. Um, Karaoke. Things, yeah, karaoke. Guitar Center, that's right. Game nights in person. So we'll rent like um, Puerto del Sol had like a nice kind of like rec room that we'd rent to play. Um, we People would bring like their switches and board games and that was always super fun. So yeah, in person socials. And then usually uh, I know we've been doing Zoe's survivor game, but usually we'll have a retreat. So we'll book like an Airbnb somewhere and go spend the night as a club and uh, play music and have a good time. Um, and then also for our weekly meeting. So this will include like our general first meeting. Um, if we have jam session sometimes if it's too cold outside to go in the little park we'll book a classroom and we'll usually just have that booked and for whenever we need it on Thursdays and then, as I mentioned jam sessions is one of the events that we really couldn't transition to online due to latency reasons um, the discord hangouts have kind of been taking the place of this but these were usually kind of like informal just meetups where people would come you can like hang out mingle you know pull out your instruments and guitars, um, kind of congregate with who you want, socialize and kind of just play whatever. Um, it was a good time. So yeah, usually those would happen at the park if it's in the park, if it's not freezing or um, sometimes in the classroom. And so some additional responsibilities as board that kind of come with this is um, a big one is at the beginning of the year, we have to book uh, we have to book our spaces for everything. So this includes um, emailing Phoenix Grill at the beginning of the year, uh, submitting our application to book a classroom for our weekly spaces, um, booking a gig night audition space. So that is usually a classroom or like one of the meeting, like business conference rooms. Um, gig night and uh, Crystal Cove for gig night. That's another big one. Uh, another big thing that's different and also takes a lot more time than it does online is equipment, transport, and storage. So for the open mics and gig night, especially, we have a whole range of sound equipment and microphones and cables and stuff that belongs to the club. And so it requires, um, each event requires coordination to kind of meet up and transport all the equipment to the to the location and get everything set up beforehand. Um, transportation is another big thing in general, just the socials and retreats. So if you like are gonna have a car on campus that ends up being really super helpful and uh, kind of crucial to the functioning of the club. Um, so yeah, if you're planning on having a car, that's, that's very, it's a very nice, a very nice quality. Um, another thing is Ring Road and Involvement Fair boothing in person. So um, Involvement Fair is usually done in the park. So we submitted like sign up beforehand and they assign us a table and then we'll go and we have a little poster um, from previous years that we set up and put on the table. And then people will walk up to the table and do sign up with their email. Uh, and then Ring Road is like food fundraisers. So last year, 
Thai tea was a big thing. I, I spent a lot of, spent a lot of nights making Thai tea in my kitchen to sell at Ring Road. And then spending time at UTC after meeting. So um, for those of you who haven't been on campus yet, UTC is like the food court that's kind of just across the street from campus. And a lot of times after meetings, we like to go, go there and just hang out and chill um, for people who have time. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Uh, so as for expectations, if we do accept you as a board member, honestly, there's not a ton outside of just common courtesy. So we expect you to be present and on time to events when you can. But of course, it's OK if you can't make it to every single one, you know, just as long as you're communicating with us and letting us know what's going on. So yeah, that ties into communication. Just we expect you to attend the meetings um, and communicate in the group chat and just be willing to discuss and debate what's going on with the club and also just being open about um, you know, your boundaries and what's going on with you and what you can come to and what you can't come to. Um, another thing is your time in OJ doesn't, um, what's the word, doesn't, dignify whether or not you're qualified to be on board you know no matter how long you've been in the club um, you can like you can find a place with us if you care about the club and you want to see it succeed and then another big thing is just to be welcoming to all types of people in music and to be helpful with any questions people might have and just in general we the main point of this club is to really create an open and welcoming environment that includes as many people as possible. So a little bit more on qualifications. Uh, as for musical experience, you do not have to have any musical experience or be a superstar at an instrument to be on board for this club. I mean, a general music appreciation helps, but um, you know, there's roles for everybody. There are a lot of um, kind of managerial and behind the scenes tasks that are you know, great for people who might not have a bunch of musical experience too. Um, as for age or what year you are, we encourage everyone to apply. We have had first years become, or people applying after their first year in the club become board members all the time. I was the first year when I applied and I'm on board and I know Natalie and Jonathan both were too. And I wanna say Zoe as well, if I'm not mistaken, but yeah. Age is but a number. We are encourage anyone and everyone who's interested to apply. And uh, as for passion is another big thing. You know, we want you to, if you decide to apply and be on board, we want it to be a rewarding experience for you. And it really helps if you come into it with a good attitude and with a genuine kind of love and um, passion for music and for the club and for wanting to see it succeed and be the best that it can be. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. There's also um, on the application, there's going to be a document link that also lists out the responsibilities, maybe in a little bit more detail. And we also divided it based off of kind of like the online responsibilities and then also what the responsibilities are in person. So that'll be linked on the doc. Um, I think that's it. Am I forgetting anything? I just want to add in a short thing, um, something that we're all really aware of as board members, and I hope we've been doing a good job with during our time, is definitely being aware of our role we have, especially with like younger students of being role models. Um, and also like um, making sure that we're not like doing anything that would make younger students uncomfortable in terms of like pressuring them to do anything they don't want to do. Um, so definitely like coming into it. Um, yeah, like, um, yes, this club's a social club, and we're, we're here to have fun and be a part of that social experience. But as board members, we do like to think we have a little more a responsibility with um, modeling good behavior for our members. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. Um, are there? Ooh, sorry, I just read the chat. Busking. I miss busking. Um, are there any questions or concerns from the attendees. 
I don't know. I think you guys know what you're doing. All right. All right, I'm gonna stop this. this.